Okay, welcome. Good evening for our next talk as a Java user group Switzerland today with a guest from Spain, Nacho. He will introduce himself, I think, when he starts with his uh, talk. So as usual, I would like to give some administrative information in the beginning. So first, a huge thank you to our sponsors. Without our sponsors, we would not be able to do all the stuff to do all the streaming and, uh, of course, our on-site events, which will hopefully be possible again in some time. As usual, you know, we have a chat. Uh, please use the chat. Maybe you're right there where you are watching the stream. Are you at home? In which city or country are you? And uh, you can just chat. And if you have a question for Nacho, please switch to the Q&A tab and enter your question there. I will collect these questions and ask Nacho uh, while he's talking. So I will interrupt him at some time and ask your questions. So please write your questions while he's talking anyways. Uh, we have a small delay with our stream, about 10 to 15 seconds uh, to optimize the stream on the server for your device, for your screen resolution and for your uh, network bandwidth. So um, there may be an awkward silence between the questions and the answer, but uh, usually it should work very well. At the end of the talk, you will be automatically forwarded to a feedback form. It's very important to get this feedback to see if we do uh, interesting stuff, if the talk was good, if the topic was good, if we do, uh, should do more talks on this topic, and you can enter comments, etc. And Optionally, you are able to enter your email address after the feedback. And uh, we um, raffle an IntelliJ license, a one-year license for IntelliJ to all people who give feedback in January. So maybe you win a license for one year for free. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. You might know this already. You can very easily reach it with uh, yt.jack.ch. Please subscribe us there and click the bell to get some uh, push notifications when new talks are online. And hopefully this talk will be available soon too. And that's it. That's all I have to say. So I'm very happy to have Nacho here. And uh, we will start with the poll from Nacho. He wants to know I started right away. How well do you know TDD and do you practice it daily? And now I switch over to the screen of Nacho and uh, yeah, have fun with your talk. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. My pleasure, by the way, for being here and for being invited. So um, whenever this pandemic is done, I probably invite all of you to join us in Barcelona. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I asked it to Marcus um, about this this uh, poll because I, I prefer just basically to know, uh, let's say, majority of the, the attendees that you are here. Uh, what what knowledge do you have? Or what experience do you have about TDD? Because then I, I can probably move faster in one areas or slower in other ones. So um, that's more or less my uh, my point. And um, so majority of the people are wondering that probably they know what they what they what it is, but uh, they haven't tried. And then some people said, including that uh, yes, they do. And the few people say that they they not always because they 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 have to I have to go they have to go faster now when they have to build some production code. And so, so few people say that, yeah, I tried, but it happens to me that it was a bit difficult. And lastly, so I would say the majority of the people know uh, something about it, but they are, they are not, let's say, used to it. So few, that's probably my, my understanding about your, your uh, point of view. Okay, so makes sense. Uh, let me then go and start my presentation. So yeah, uh, first thing I mentioned, so thank you very much for, for inviting me here, for being in those difficult times to uh, listen my my talk. I hope I hope you will like a uh, few things that I will 
try to share about TDD around TDD, and I hope it will be, be interesting and at the same time funny. So don't 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 try to skip any particular questions. So try to uh, tell me anything you want to would like to know. I will try to answer it. And so the first point is why? You no, know, why this session about TDD? There are a lot of people that they are practicing and using TDD, but I think there are a few things that many people doesn't understand, uh, they say in the same way. And I think uh, understanding the basics makes totally sense at least for some people. And you might notice also that there is a particular difference between building tests after your code was right, written, let's say, or doing it uh, before. So there's a big difference in that. And, and I hope I will be able to, to to show you. And another thing that I, I think is going to be interesting for you is to see a live code example, but not only a simple cat I will uh, show you later, but it will be a bit a bit different. It will take me a bit of time, but I hope it will be a big, uh, will take you a big picture about how to do it in a different with a, a scenario. And yes, I will show you a few tips that I normally use in, in my day-to-day -day basics. So yeah, that is basically all of these things. So I hope that you will not run away of this particular talk and I hope it will be funny for you. Uh, about myself, yes, so I am Nacho. I'm in, from Barcelona. I am the founder of the Barcelona Java user groups and I help uh, founding the, uh, well, I co-founded the Java and GBC in Barcelona conference, which is, uh, I think, a great conference for the perspective of enjoying a different place and a funny place with different talks and a sunny a beautiful place you have to come by the way and yes i like very much to 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 talk about the clean code pair programming steam practices i was running i uh, like to run uh, and, and i was let's say i was enjoying mountains and that's why i was going time ago a marathon runner by mountains so yeah um and yeah um, this is my twitter handle you can ping me around uh, extreme programming, TDD. Uh, I'm, I'm doing things with uh, a lot of things with Java mainly. And, but yeah, I, li I like to talk about software engineer, I would say. And yes, I'm working at Dynatrace, an application performance monitoring that we, uh, uh, I think we have many people based in Austria and different labs. And also we have some here in Barcelona and also in other places like Detroit, etc. So yeah. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, just uh, ping me any questions at any time. I think Marcus will come back with the with the answer with the question. Sorry, I will try to provide the the answer. So yes, try to ask any particular hard question that you may to you to you came came to you. Uh, yeah, and, and also the, I, the 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 last warning before starting is basically everything that I shared here is based on my particular experience. So I hope uh, you will understand that there are things that probably you, you, you will not share the same opinion, but yeah, uh, something that probably we can we can discuss. Um, yeah, you will see that there is nothing really, uh, let's say, uh, different from my, my the abstract. So I will explain where this TDD came from, the advantages and the disadvantages about applying it, a bit about the process and the, the, the let's say, the core principles around it. What good habits do, do can we use, for example? And then we will see the example with the the live coding part and then the final recap. So yeah, let's start with this. Uh, came well, this TDD thing, let's say, came from the '90s, where Ken Beck uh, was uh, working at Chrysler, if I'm not wrong, when he was uh, describing what it began with the extreme programming techniques, right? And and the idea about this um, uh, TDD approach is basically to be able to demonstrate that where where the computers were based on tapes, uh, you were able to uh, the, to, 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 to see that the tape that you were uh, running, uh, let's say, uh, executing was exactly the one that you were uh, expecting. No? So that's that's the idea of this X unit framework, no? to understand that something that you will expect is, is exactly what you what you were looking for. No? And yeah, this was a long time ago, but it still is the same, let's say, approach, uh, still valid. So yes, at the same time, I, I, I invite you to imagine in a particular no, in a particular scenario where you can imagine the text, no, uh, tests, or you can detect, uh, sorry, errors uh, in a, in a, let's say, in a simple way. And, and at the same time, you can detect the earlier, no, in the, terms, in the terms of when you are designing something instead of uh, arriving to something that you detect later when you are running something in production. Oh man, we failed because something uh, weird happened. Uh, at the same time, imagine that you can follow a particular process where you can develop a software in, uh, let's say, 
simple way. And those processes are really simple, but at the same time, it's going to help you to not mix things or just uh, to enable this development in a, let's say, a simple and, and, and easy approach. And uh, at the same time, you will see that your software is going to be easy to change and easy to refactor because the, the builds, uh, the, the, the tests that you're going to make and the safety net you're going to provide. Continue imagine with this wonderful world. Just imagine this that this software gi gives you an, an idea how a consumer is going to use the component. This is one of the best benefits, I think, about uh, working with TDD. And the test will be really live. No? It's like documentation is really live because you will see how you can maintain those. And also at the same time, it's going to be helping you to understand what your code is doing. So the software you're going to write at the same time is going to cost you uh, less money, right? So it, I included here two references that demonstrate, basically there are two abstracts where it's demonstrated that applying TDD means that at the end, the development cost about your software is going to be cheaper, cheaper to maintain, cheaper to, uh, the, to, to evolve. And yes, your software is going to have less bugs. That's probably the other way around explaining it might make more sense. So yeah, it's basically this approach where TDD came. Uh, uh, well, this had, I would say they had the benefits of TDD. So yes, it's not a lie. Okay, but it's not going to solve all of your problems. So Ray is not, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to explain uh, some of the bad parts around TDD, right? So yes, it has a lot of disadvantages. And I will start with the first one. It's complicated. It's complicated to, to make it work uh, from the very beginning in, in terms of it's not too easy to start. Uh, many people struggle with, with how to start with. And I would say that there are no particular uh, I, will, I, can, I can find any particular place where you can start and say, this is the way uh, to apply and, and use uh, TDD. I would say that it has a particular, I would say high yeah, learning curve, and it's not something that it, it depends exactly on the complexity of the code that you have already. So depending if your design and, 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 and the product you're working with is really complicated in terms of how it's designed and the, the, the models that you have, the dependencies that you have, how it's really well designed in terms of testability is gonna give you, uh, let's say better or worse experience. So then it can be a large investment in a team and therefore your experience in your team applying TDD will take you even more time. So it's, it's gonna require more time and effort to, to make it happen. So yes, it's, it's those things makes TDD difficult. And at the same time, because of this, you will see that it's really easy to forget, to, to mix, for example, one step to another. And you will see that your team, for example, uh, cannot help you because they don't have experience. So it provokes at some at some point some resistance. So some people will not uh, allow, will not uh, try it because well, they have, they have been struggling with time and, and then it's going to be difficult for, for them to understand that you need to invest some time for building tests and therefore trying to make those practices. Then therefore it can be yeah, a, a practice that can be easily corrupted in terms of uh, instead of focusing on, on, on how TDD gives you some of the benefits I explained before, uh, including better design, better stability, you can do it in another way and say, oh, let, let's go for and, and, and high, try to arrive to a maximum level of code coverage, which is completely different. It makes no sense to, uh, to link one thing to another. So at the end, it's kind of extremely, I would say extremely difficult to make it correctly in terms of uh, not doing it the bad way. So that, that I would say that there are many ways why TDD isn't so, so difficult. I explained it some. So yeah, how it is exactly? Well, Imagine that you've been, no, I, 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 so I think many of you have been learning about how to drive a bicycle, right? Long time ago. But now imagine that you have to ride a different bicycle, you know, right? Now, nowadays. So it's going to be a bit difficult for you, no? It's kind, of, it's kind of, okay, I have to learn again how to do it. It's going to be a bit difficult for you. And at the same time, you're telling me that this is the right way. Come on. Uh, now you have, everybody understands why in those uh, areas TDD makes the things difficult for the people that are older, and including myself, and that's why it provokes resistance, right? Because I, I already learned how to drive a bicycle, but uh, riding now different bicycle is like, come on, why is these things happen, right? It's like, well, it makes me makes me think about out of my, where, where where I am, right? It's like this image where everybody knows no, that those weird things happen when you are completely out of your comfort zone, when you learn few things, when you are really, I don't know, uh, explaining few things that you don't know exactly is where you understand what is happening. No, That's that's exactly the point about TDD. When you're out of your comfort zone, you understand uh, the things that really uh, you can do with TDD, then I think you will understand that the magic could, could, could happen, right? 
So yeah, nothing, nothing more from this perspective of advantages and disadvantages. I, I was, I summarized some of them. Uh, probably there are many others. Um, I will continue with the process and the rules. Probably many of you know. For the people that doesn't know, I will explain a little bit. But those are not so difficult. Uh, these are the, let's say, the, the simple process. It takes, let's say, three steps, and it's not, uh, not, not nothing than that. It's basically try to start writing a test that could fail. The number, the number one that is. Basically, we are going to evolve Oracle based in tests that are red. So objective one is writing those tests in red, see that it is in red, and then write the code, the minimal code that we can use, the, 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 the step number two, to pass that test. So the test that we have in red, just move it to green. With this approach, basically, we are trying to solve a particular specification, right? So this, this is expectation that we want. Just try to make it uh, pass. And then the next, the last step is to see that the code that we have already, to see that if this code is already working or not. And if it's already working because it's green, then what, what we can do to, to see that this code is already, uh, let's say, can be improved. So it's kind of specifying first what we want to code, what we want to, as a desire, what we want to achieve. The second step, let's say the, the, the green one is just create the minimal one to, the, to, to describe the behavior. It's just to make it work, let's say. And the third one is to clean the code, is to make it, let's say, uh, remove duplication, make it better in terms of this design and testability, et cetera. It's not, nothing really difficult, but this is the, ba the basic concept around it. It is, are those, those process that is basically continuously uh, doing in that way. Um, the rules are something that Robert Martin already summarized it really well, I think, and it's not something I will I will take too much time, but I will summarize it in uh, here. Uh, but the point is that, as you as you probably remember, if I start with production, then I can uh, I can start sorry I, can, I start with test, uh, then I go to production. But the code in production, the only code in production that you have to do is basically the minimum one that could make those tests pass. So the idea is basically to build the test first, and then will help us to demonstrate that the production code uh, is the minimum one that we need for passing that test. So in the other way around, we only uh, can write more than a unit test to make uh, things happen in production. But then you have to write tests that fail to provoke that we have to change the production code. Say it another way. We tests will be something that are first class citizens and we cannot move more than writing tests that we can, uh, they, they, they have to be a unit test. I have a offer, something that I have to I will show you in the demo mode, but I will continue in that way. Uh, and, and the last one is basically, we are not allowed to more um, production code that is enough. So it has to be provoked by a unit test that is failing. So we cannot evolve production if we don't have a test that is failing. It's, let's say doing another say in another way, we we have to make the test passes. So do the simple code that we can and don't over engineer them. Right. So that's more or less the the the, the ways of how uh, those rules are ha, 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 you can you can summarize them. Uh, uh, let's move to the next topic that is some of the habits that I would say that are recommended where you're applying with TDD. And yes, the, the, the point number one is uh, not so uh, difficult to understand, but it's difficult to apply because where you're used to TDD, probably you will see that you are not uh, skipping any step, but the, where you are writing production code and when you start with TDD, it's something really normal when you are forgetting to run the test. So basically, because we start with the test in red, you can verify that this test is, is already read and then uh, go and try to solve it. But when you're not used to that, it's normal when you are writing a test, you forget to run that test and then probably this test is in green. So it depends on your experience. This is something that you will, but then that's why I will start with this. So basically try to remember that you have to start writing a test that is in red, verify that this test is in red and then move and solve that test. Uh, one of the things that uh, I will recommend is of course, is to try to make the test simple and, and, and at the same time to have only one reason to fail because then you will see that is really easy to understand the different uh, scenarios, let's say, that you have. They are already easy to, to let's say, to solve. Because if you some of them are really, let's say, complex in terms of assertions, you will see that there is not are an easy way to understand where is the problem and then how to solve it. And those should be really easy to, to let's say, to change and really easy to understand and to maintain. And the last one is about writing the assertion first. I will, I will show you uh, in a minute how to do it. 
So the naming convention, there are many conventions around around production control. In Java, we have uh, some of the, you know, some ones that are probably the most um, the most famous probably. But uh, talking about naming conventions, I think there are not so many. And I, I used a particular, well, it's not mine, it's from Sandra Mancuso, by the way. And I will recommend you to use it just for your unit test because it's going to help you a, a little bit to explain why your business is doing what it's doing and how to do it. Basically, ending the test unit by shoot, you will force you to start uh, the names of the test kind of an actions. And this is going to help you to understand that those different actions are the behavior that you expect. In this particular scenario, for example, you will see that there are uh, some scenarios that should raise an action or do something. And that's why should help me to understand much better how to express and this define, let's say, all these scenarios. And there's, there, therefore, you can explain in really plain, in, plain English and everybody will understand exactly what is happening in the, in the internals of this class. And therefore, you will not see that I'm testing that method, that other and another. It's basically explaining the scenario will help you help us to understand much better what the code is doing. Also, you will see that then the methods and the tests that you are describing and the different use cases that you will see, they are more clear. And also you will understand much better that are related to business. They are not focused on the implementation. They are probably understanding more, 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 they're describing more or less the behavior that is happening internally. And of course, if you have something to have a look, you, you will always have the opportunity, but you don't need to go into the details if you don't need it, right? They are, let's say, explaining it in a, in a higher level. I, I mentioned before, I start with uh, the assertion, you will see how to do it right, right in a minute, a minute. But, but now when going to a particular class uh, in test, I will show you how, to, how, how I normally try to do the, the things. So yes, I try to, as I mentioned, create the, the, the class with, the, with this naming, and then I start, uh, try to start naming the method. Then I will try to explain the assertion because then uh, it's going to help me to understand much better what I expect for designing this this method and how how are you going to demonstrate and verify that that test that is working fine definitely properly. That's why at at this point I'm going to move to the bottom from from up in this perspective probably my intelligence my my id id is going to help me understanding okay this variable doesn't exist what I have to do just please create my, create that class create that in this case a state and and then I'm going to when I have to define this assertion, then I can go up and, and trigger the code that gives me the opportunity to then go to the assertion. But at the same time, I don't have all the full thing that I need going up. That's why I'm going describing that and saying, okay, I don't understand what this, in this case, uh, triggering the code will, will help me to understand that I need to use this calculator, but this calculator is not defined probably at that point. And then I need to do the setup, which basically is do the rest of the things that I require for running this test properly. This in this way the order is like going down, no, to the bottom, going up. It's a bit different from probably many of you are doing. But yeah, how to start? Many people are struggling with this. How how I can do it in my 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 company or how I can start? Uh, let's say in many. So there's a lot of content everywhere. Uh, we say in online you can find many many kata examples and exercises. I would say that one of the best ways is to start with a proof of concept with personal projects with kata also and practicing. So practicing with your partners, practicing with yourself, and try to make it let's say something that you can uh, you can be uh, let's say mastering from your side. And yes, of course, one of the best ways to uh, make it happen is I would say this doing with somebody else is basically do pair programming. Probably many of you are practicing pair programming for the people that are not doing used to it. I will say that this is a beautiful practice, but basically two people are working on a same uh, same problem, right? And in this this picture, I think is a good example. Those two people are basically driving, no? In a, in a, well, only one is driving, the other one is, uh, let's say, explaining how to arrive to a particular place. And this is exactly the role where we where we can see when you are pairing. Basically, we have a driver that is writing, the, let's say, the, the code that is, let's say, uh, changing the code. And the, the other person, the other colleague is basically the navigator, the, 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 the one that is looking for the, the things that are coming and is looking for something like a wider view. Like, like the strategic direction, let's say, of the things that we are changing right now. It's something that is, is really interesting because then you one person is going to be focused exactly on what the things that we, we have right now, and the other one is going to take notes about what we have to do to, to change that particular, uh, let's say, approach to do something that is going to come in the next, in the next iteration. And this, these changes, these rules are going to be changing from time to time, depending on the team. But this back and forth, let's say, is going to help 
you as a team to get more feedback as a, as a person, let's say, to get more feedback when building a system. This is going to be helping you a lot if you are trying to practice, for example, TDD, because you will learn from somebody else how to do that. You will learn how to improve your ID knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. That's more or less um, what I have to say about the, the good habits, right? So now it's, I think it's time for the example. But let's, let's yeah, I think, so let, let's go for live coding. Let me grab some water first. And yes, let me add this warning about, yes, it's gonna be live coding. So if something weird happened, just, just understand that it's live coding. And probably if I missed for something, you will understand that it's for, for I don't know, for because of my ID or this kind of thing. So yeah, uh, but yeah, let's do it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it happen. So yeah, this is the the, the, the card that I will show you in a minute. Uh, it's something I already think about it. It's a particular thing that I um, I define like uh, imagine that you are working in a startup, right? That your your basically your your job is to sell and rent films over the internet, right? So I can imagine many services right now that are providing this in those days. And yeah, so basically our managers are still telling us, okay, I, I would like to build a new service that give us uh, the recommended fields to, 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 to particular users, right? But they have to provide some, some kind of recommendations, right? And the recommendations basically uh, will be kind of a list of films that are associated with a particular genre. And by default, the, the result will be, let's say, order by the average rate that the users uh, have shared before for uh, this particular film. So basically the film uh, can contain you know, typical things like the title, the year where it was published, uh, the tax around, I don't know, uh, if it's science fiction or if it's related with computers or it's related with adventures, I don't know. And the last one is about genres. No, it's the genre as science fiction, as I mentioned, or whatever, uh, whatever um, uh, genre we want. And yep, yeah, I think I'm gonna try to make it. Give me a second, please. Hmm? So yeah, let's try to make it. So here I have, let's say, my empty, my empty project I already created before, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna define my dependencies. I don't like this pretty much uh, because it's a bit old. It's already created before, so I will try to, uh, up, let's say, add late with the dependencies I like the most, which are basically focus on JUnit five and some libraries which is include uh, Azure J four. Um, doing some assertions. So yes, I mentioned for for that, this is a film recommendation service, right? And at, the, at that particular point, uh, what I want to do is, uh, as I mentioned before, right? We, we, we would like to start with the test. So let's start with it. And uh, let's see if I can, I don't know what's happening here. Come on. Okay, now. Um, so let's start with it. Uh, so probably this can be the film recommendation service, right? Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I would like to start with a uh, with a uh, unit. So that's why I start with the with this uh, with this prefix suffix. Sorry. And so yes, let's start with uh, the idea of returning the things that I mentioned. So let's go back to definition. Where is the presentation? Yeah, here. So the recommendation says that we have to build a service that returns a list of films that are associated with a particular genre ordered by average rate. Okay. So let's try to define it that way. So where's my mouse? Okay, I have my mouse, where is my mouse? Yeah. Okay, I don't know why the mouse disappeared. Come on. Yes, now, well, I don't know why. Uh, so yeah, let's start with saying that we want to return uh, films, right, by genre. Uh, yes, order, no, order by, by average rate. I don't have anything right now, but uh, the thing about, about it is that I know that probably uh, I would like to assert, know that uh, something that I'm going to return is going to be exactly uh, the thing that I, 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 I would like to, uh, yeah, to, uh, to know. That is basically that the result of this particular method I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to be a kind of a list of films. So something like, um, yeah, films. But I will, I will go step by step probably in that, that way because I don't have it in this case, even in the service. So, um, so yeah, uh, average is this average, what I'm doing, average. Okay, uh, it's difficult too. So let's say that field service should return the films by, by average. 
And then what I have to include here probably has to be the, the, the this way, you know, the, the, uh, the genre. So science fiction could be the first one. Uh, yes, and what I expect is that this equal, right, this result came equal to films, right? And uh, Nacho, sorry yep. to interrupt you. Maybe yep. you can make the font a little bit bigger. A bigger, okay. Let's see if I can make it like this. Could work for you. Well, maybe 18. Oh, because I, I would like to split the screen like this and therefore, I don't know if you're going to... We go with it and if someone has a problem, please uh, mention it. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. So the idea, is, as I mentioned, is to try to describe this test like this, right? Uh, so in this case, what I want to do is to define this film service that I've just seen. I haven't, I haven't done anything with it. So this film service is not the test. It's basically the new implementation that I want to uh, right, to create. Uh, so something like this is going to be like this, right? And now I, I have to create that. I don't want that. This is going to be production code. Yes, so here we are going to move it here. And probably I hope you can see it like this. Okay, so uh, at this point, I, I'm waiting for these respective films to be something like a list that I'm going to create here. Uh, not this list, this list probably could, could work. And also the films, right? So I'm going to create also the film. Uh, there's going to be a class when, yes, so I want, come on. Yes, I want to create that class. Not again, in, not in the test. I want to create in the production, yes. And yeah, so this list this has to be this list that we know from Java, okay? Right now we have a null because I, I, I don't want to explain too much, but basically I, I have to build that list, right? And to be able to compare it. Uh, now I don't have that method, so let's just start creating that method. And this has to be, oh, basically because the signature, this has to be, uh, by the way, I'm not going to use right now uh, any particular uh, uh, repository just for the safety, you know, to be, to be able to make it happen, you know, in, in, in less in one hour. I hope to me you understand why. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit impossible to make it. So uh, in this case, I hope that this equal has to be, uh, what I'm doing like this is equal to, yes. Ah, probably the upper case of this. So basically what I'm describing right now is the expectation that I, I expect uh, when running this method, right? I expect that the expected film should be something here. Okay, I don't, I don't have even the films. I don't have any expected films, but I think we can create some. Um, so for doing in this, in, in, let's say in a, let's say speed level, I would, I would, a faster level, I will go uh, and try to make it uh, not like this. Uh, this just because otherwise if I have to create those classes and those particular uh, objects one by one, I can do it. But as you can imagine, uh, it's gonna take me a bit of time. So it's nothing really difficult uh, to create, you know, a class that contains a film. In this case, has to contain a title a year, uh, the tax, and the genders, right? Um, just for able for be able to make it, let's say, faster. Uh, I have some snippets here. If you can uh, follow me, that basically can help me, you know, to understand that this is the the way of, uh, or one of the ways I would say to create uh, a particular a particular film. So in this case, for example, this uh, this is a film uh, matrix. Probably many of you may know, uh, but uh, the point is that this is a constructor that I already designing, right? Building at the at that moment, uh, that is basically helping me to build this this film. Uh, the title. Well, this has an ID, okay. And this is the list of tags in this case, and in this case can be the list of genres, right? So nothing really that I'm to say. I can do it manually, but it will be much faster to do it that way. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to be the point right now. Like I, I would like to do it in that way, and then I will create another one here, right? So let me try to uh, let me try to do it in that way, and then you will see uh, what I can do. So basically, this is the ID. We said this is the title, right? Uh, this is the year of uh, the production was film, I think. And these are the list of tags, no? So there are the tags, and these are the list of genres. Okay. Uh, so right now, I don't want to do anything really fancy here. And now I want to do another one, because basically for checking that the average rate is correct or the order, I need at least two to, to demonstrate that, right? Um, so where is my mouse? Come here, yeah. And the other list I, I the other film I chose was this one, 
probably many of you know that. Uh, Star Wars, I guess so. If you try to have a look. Uh, so yes, this is another film. And nothing really fancy, right? So I'm creating those uh, those films. I'm going to use it here to check that where I'm running um, those these tests. We are going to sec see that these expected films should be the ones that I'm going to um, uh, let's say pass here. So let's run the test, and I hope you will see that this is failing. Okay, so now we have built something, the setup is done, the method is defined, but of course we have a, a fail. This is the, the first step of the test is we build something, it's already failing, now we have to pass, it, to pass it to green. The most simple thing to do that is could be to build a new list here and to return exactly the same films. But of course, this is not gonna help us to define the solution and to go and, and, and define something that we can use for in the same production purposes. So probably when we are using this service, in the, at the same time, we are designing, right? So now we have a red uh, test that is giving us the opportunity to design where, well, Nacho, what do you think about defining the solution? What do you want to use at that point? So now I can do the simple thing that could be returning the list of films, but probably it is not gonna help, help us. Probably more more production, let's say, or more professional way, we would like to use something else that could give us back a list of films and good, give this will have this business this logic around getting the films ordered by a particular thing and also ordered by a particular um, sort order right so probably this could be kind of a repository and i think it's a good idea to use that particular piece of software that can give us the opportunity to connect for example to the database get the list back of these uh, films and then get it back to the service that's just something that, that we can do uh do it in that way we can do something like i don't know repository and then just uh, films by, uh, and then uh, yes, can do something like can films, yes, films by genre, right? Uh, and then, because we mentioned that they have to be sorted by average, right? If I don't remember, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, uh, yes, it's a particular genre and has to be ordered according to the average rate. Okay, so at this level, uh, come on. Where is my mouse again? Here. So what I want to do is to here to pass through this genre and also at the same time we want to introduce this sort order. Sort, yes, we like this sort order. Uh, let's say average rate. Yeah. So let's, I, I'm designing right now the solution. So for me, this makes sense because I'm going to use a repository and this can be a film repository, right? Repository. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to define that Oh yes, that's next is let's create that. And yes, it's gonna be at the same oh, where I, I'm forgetting the pack the package, but you understand that this is something that we can uh, let's say change later. Uh this reference is not gonna start working because I don't have this sort order. This sort order can be an enum. Uh yes, can be at that place. And at the same time I can create that constant. It's not a constant, sorry, my fault. It has to be an enum value. Enum. Now, yes, much better. So now I'm defining that the solution could be to go to the repository called that method. I'm going to define that method that could be uh, defined in that way. And then I can return this and this can be the sort order, right? Uh, yeah, so this has to be the list, like this, right? And yeah, so right now I only define this for, for returning that and calling it. So right now this should return the same result because I haven't changed anything. I will already go deep into a more in another a, in a level, but now this implementation here is not working. So let's try to make it, uh, let's say, solve that to make, to, to continue growing the solution, but just for um, define this skeleton of this film class. So let's do it in that way. I don't want to go too much deeper. Basically I'm assigning it to those fields to, to the things that I, I need on that class. Let's run again the test. So this node pointer exception that I have right now is because the repository is not defined. Okay, now the question is, what do you want to do right now? At this point, I have a particular solution that is using a service and then I'm gonna pass the logic and move it to the repository. Okay, I want to connect right now at a particular database. Probably the, the answer could be yes to demonstrate that it's working. But now because I'm designing the solution, I don't want to, in the unit test, connect to the database. And that's why probably I need to see how we can replace that with another thing. One of the best ways to doing that is probably with a, with a mocking, mock element, right? So at uh, this level, probably I need to pass through this film repository, right? And to define, uh, 
to define how I want to, I, let's say, uh, reply from a particular uh, action. And that's why I would like to go and, and define this as a, as a repository here that basically can be a mock, right? And that's why I here I'm going to use Mockito as uh, the place where the, the, the class or the library I can use for uh, defining a particular scenario and then replace that content. So because I don't want right now to connect to, uh, as you can imagine, to a real database to define a, that solution. So here I can basically inject that field and connect it to this. Uh, I don't know why the name doesn't match. Probably was my fault uh, because this is film report, right? Okay, so right now what I did, uh, uh, what I did basically was to introduce this dependency on the film repository, and basically I, I right now is gonna call the film repository to run the things. So let's try to run the test again, and you will see that it's not working because the result is basically giving nothing for me. So now I can define that the this expected things that I have here probably are the ones that I would like to return, right? So now I, I have to describe this when that is happening when the repository will call will return some films. That's the, the, the point about the, this design that we are doing right now. So film repository, when this film repository is returned by genre, that could be the science fiction, science fiction, right? Uh, oh, science fiction. And the orders should be similar to the one that we use, right? Uh, when we are running this method, then we have to return the expected films because otherwise the film repository will are gonna return the, the values that we expect. Right now, I think the test is green. Yes, so the test is green. We are already defining a particular, let's say, scenario and this is working. Of course, we are only designing the, the first part. Let's go deep into the next one, where it could be the fine implementation of the film repository. How we can implement that? Well. There are many ways to implement that, but I would say that one of the best ways is to go and create a test that could verify us that this is exactly what we expect. In this case, because the repository should connect exactly to the database, I'm not gonna go to the unit test. I'm gonna go to introduction test. Natural. Yep. There are some questions on the meantime. Yeah. And uh, three of them are very interesting, but not directly related to your demo. I would like to ask them at the end, but Two of these are related to your live coding. Uh, one is from uh, Stefan, and he is asking, uh, to, do I concentrate now on implementing my film recommendation service should test, or do I add another test for the film repository? So, so the question is how I can test this film repository? Uh, no, it's um, if you switch over to the uh, other screen, you can see the question. It's um, do I uh, if he has to concentrate on the film recommendation service test, mm -hmm. or should he add another test for the film repository first? Okay, uh, so the, I understand. The, the the thing is that right now what we 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 have done is what is called outside in. So I don't I I only know the requirements from my let's say my managers. I started from out of the system, right? And I started with the with the most out of the system uh, element that is the service. And then I'm gonna go deep into the into the solution. That's why I created this repository. And then I go move internally in the particular piece that I would like to right now implement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very Make much. Sense. Maybe uh, Stefan can write in the chat if this answers his question. Okay. The second one is from Atma. Um, you wrote a lot of code without a failing test. Did yeah. <laughs> no, if, in fact, uh, the only thing that I wrote without failing test was this one. But if you remember, this test was always in red until we arrived to define this condition here. Right, because always was in red because of the film repository was not injected because the film repository was a null because this method was not created because here was I was not calling the particular method that I want so basically this this test was always in red it's gonna help me to understand that this test is not solved until we don't have everything that I, I, I need for describing, let's say, the scenario that is basically defining the zero repository, defining the sort order, and defining the, the, the let's say, the signature that we want. Thank you very much. And the other three I would uh, ask you at the end, they are more common questions. Cool. Thank you very much. So, as I mentioned, that because we, we were, let's say, pushing the changes of the code or the design is 
pushed by the out, out of the system. Now we go deep into, and we want to, let's say, have a clear implementation of a particular example of a repository that could get information from a, a particular database. So now I, I don't want to do that in a unit test because I, I, I need exactly this real connection to demonstrate that the repository is going to work in production. And the only way uh, that I can do it is basically to try to connect a database. How to do that in a unit test? I will not recommend to do that, but we can do that in an integration test. That's why here I'm going to try to, um, let's say, connect or try to connect to a, con a, bus a database that is going to use a test container, basically, to try to uh, uh, connect to a real database and get that database uh, back with the, the, the information that I want. It'd before doing that, probably I need, uh, sorry, my fault, I need to include that dependency here as a gradle dependency, right? So here, let me go back here and in try to introduce these dependencies that are, those are dependencies that are normally used for creating and using uh, test containers right now, which is basically test containers, the dependency with JUnit, and the dependency in this case with uh, PostgreSQL and also Hikari for connecting to a database using a, a, a pool, a connection pool. So now here, uh, I think we can try to make this test container right now. And as you can see, the dependencies are at least are recognized. And here for the safety of going faster, I will not explain too much, but basically here I'm defining this Postgres image that we're gonna use. I'm gonna create that uh, database with this particular structure I will show you in a minute. And then I'm gonna expose that for be able to connect it. And then every single test we are gonna pop up, let's say this container, we are gonna connect with using this method and then we are gonna try to connect to the database, right? So for the safety of doing it faster, this is the, the, the script of the SQL that I'm gonna, I'm gonna build, let's say. It's not really difficult, but but it's an example. A, there are many ways of doing that probably. Um, I can imagine thousands, <laughs> so probably. But uh, yeah, this is a particular table that has all the films. These are all the users, right? And these are the ratings. Basically, the ratings will relate the users with the films and the, the, the average rate that the people will will put will, will will vote for that. And as you can see here, for well, for example, we have different users, John, Michael, Luke. And here we have the different films. So do you remember we have uh, Matrix, Star Wars, and I include another one, which is up. Another beautiful picture, by the way, a film. Uh, so here you can see that they have full, all of them have science fiction as a genre, but not all of them have uh, uh, science fiction, which is uh, up the one that is not having it, right? So as you can see, the, the IDs of the films, here we have the rates by uh, every single, uh, let's say, uh, user and films. So as you can see, in this case, Matrix has kind of 8.5 as an average, right? Uh, Star Wars has only one vote, has a seven. I don't know why in this case, to be honest. But, uh, and at the same time we have uh, up, but up is not science fiction. So probably is not gonna get back or should not get back, no, in the, in, in our case. So let's go back here and try to copy that uh, as, a, as a dependency for running tests because I don't know exactly in production, but this is an example, but let's say if it works. And, and, and now I will probably, when I run that test, probably the database is gonna be, or oh, I hope the database is gonna be uh, booting up and at that point, uh, I hope that, the, that we're going to get the data source at some point and be able to check that the, the connection and the result is going to work. So uh, at this point, let's try to build that. That's going to help us to build the, the, the implementation. So let's do it that way because it's our integration test. Let's uh, build it like a return uh, films uh, filtered, right? Because I have to be filtered by genre, uh, genre and then ordered by average rate. This is the piece, the logic that the, this repository should do, right? So at, at this level, uh, I would like to connect exactly to the, to right to the database, and the best thing probably we can do is to go and do it in that way, and then just call that method. That could be I don't know science fiction in this case, uh, fiction, right? And this sort of order that we mentioned that we want to do it like this. So this has to be already created. And uh, yeah, so I have to create that to see that those lists is the list that we want to return, right? And what we want to do just by the way, is we, we want to check, right? That, uh, that the list of films that we have here, uh, let's do this because to be able to make it more clear to understand, is exactly, no, is equal to expected films. That those films, I will, I will describe it in a minute. But basically those affected films, I'm gonna create that uh, here, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I know right now what I'm missing, which is basically this has to be the list of films that I have, right? And those expected films, uh, as I'm as, as you probably may notice, are exactly the ones that I have here, 
right? So one of the things that I, I would like to go is to not go too much on, into this, but basically I, I can move that in a particular class, right? Um, so yes, I would like to move this as, as a constant and then be able to use it in, in, a, in a, a fancy way from the, other, from the other class. So let's see if I can move that to a particular place. So selling so expression, no. I would like to go, uh, yes, I have an idea. So uh, this can be something like a film, object like this right and i want to create a class here and then i'm going to create those here basically i'm trying, trying to move it let's say manually right i don't like to do things manually to be honest but i think this is one of the easiest way to do it right now uh, i think this is, has to be star wars and this one has to be uh yeah and with this, this particular approach, I'm going to define those constants. I'm going to be able to, uh, right, to be able to be, be visible, sorry, for this test and the other one that I'm, I was using, right? So basically, I moved those constants there. And then from the repository, I can connect to here and see that this, this is exactly the list in this case that I want to demonstrate here. It's not a simple example, right? So nothing really... Uh, fancy, but I will see. And uh, the other one is Star Wars. Come on, Star Wars. So, yes, let's uh, give me a second because this has to be yes now and then. Uh, let's do it in that way because I don't remember exactly. Theme of your mother has to be Star Wars, right? So now, uh, this test should uh, fail probably because th this is not working right now and the implementation of the repository is not working. So let's run it like this. Yeah, repository is trying to probably run uh, and now it's, it's, it's failing, right? Because this is not working anymore. That's cool. Let's see with this particular structure that I did before. Sorry, I forgot to change to see that the service is working. It still is working. Basically, I only moved the, the dependencies to a particular common class. And now the repository is not working, right? Why is, why is it not working? Well, I haven't done anything pretty much here apart from starting the starting the, uh, the repository and, 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 the, and, the, and the Postgres instance. So now let me let me show you the code that I will show you right now. Just for the safety, I will not go deep into the details, but basically the idea <clears throat> is going to be that this is the, the query based on this particular sentence that is going to do the join on those two, uh, uh, let's say those two uh, tables. And basically, uh, selecting the, the 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 elements that is going to match by IDs of the films, and basically we are going to return order by the by the or by the uh, sort order that I pass through, and, and and nothing really fancy. Basically, I'm connect to the database. I'm going to use uh, pure Java, pure JDBC to use the connection and to connect to the database, and then pass the result as a basically pure film. Nothing really. Uh, complicated, but this is the let's say the implementation that I would like to share for you, uh, just to be able that I'm not I'm not going to wait you know too much time for doing this kind of thing. So the result is a class like this. Uh, I know that this is not something really normal, uh, but just for the safety of doing it in, in let's say in particular speed and <laughs> faster, I will show you how to how to do it. Probably this sort of order is not the one; it's this one. Yes. And then I'm missing this data source. This is something that probably you can notice that here I prepared everything for using the data source. So this is something probably I need to pass through just yes, because otherwise we are not going to be able to connect to the data source. But let's do it manually first. So this is going to be the, the this that this not a database. It's going to be the data data source. Sorry. Yes, so this is the data source we are going to use for connecting to the database and run that query to order it by the particular, uh, the particular, uh, let's say, order column. So I forgot this is not the test that we want. The test that we want is this one. And let's see if this is failing. Should fail because I'm not passing the data source. So yes, this data source is null. Okay, let's pass through here and get the connection of the database. And here I need probably a constructor in that way. And then probably I need to assign, right, this data source, not that one, sorry. That one, I need to define it and use it. Come on. Yes, so basically now I'm injecting this data source and using it to be able then to run that test again. So now let's run the test again and see if now it's working. 
Uh, no, it's not working, but apparently the result is similar, more or less, what we expect. Okay, okay, that, that makes total sense because basically it means that the join we did is correct and more or less we are trying to get the results and parsing it as a film. So let's see what is failing. Well, I think we have a lot of things failing here because I don't know anything about the film. What if we basically make the things much better for us? So let's try to implement the method as we normally do, right? So to, to, to be able to see if the elements are correct. In those cases, equals and hash code are the methods that probably we, we are struggling to define. And then also probably the two string, right? Because basically when somebody would like to, the, 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 um, the JVVM would like to compare the two elements, we'll, we'll, we'll give, we have to give them the opportunity to say, okay, two things are the similar or are the same if they match in IDEs, GR, title, tags, and genres, right? And at the same time, we'd like to see if this is correct based, if there's any problem with uh, with those instances and basically see where's the representation in string. That's basically the thing that I already defined. And now the test is working. So this is beautiful because basically with a particular integration test, and with a unit test, we define basically a pure knowledge, a pure base uh, business that is already working. And at the same time, let me have a look on one thing, just for 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 the safety of doing this and, and finish my my demo, is basically to show you that now, just for doing these things, we are we are uh, in, in that way. Uh, I forgot to include the package, sorry, but as you can see here, all those classes are covered by tests, which is particularly interesting. And the, the ones that have, let's say, the business, they have a huge number of covers. So 100% of lines of the service is already covered by tests. And the film repository is about 93% of them covered by tests. Of course, film is not all, always covered by tests because it doesn't have too much business, let's say. But as you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, the, the idea is telling me, okay, this is covered by tests, this is covered by tests, this is not covered by tests. Okay, we can try to let's say test that probably is not so so really interesting in, in, in that way. And at the same time, the repository side, we tested all of this. So using TDD and doing something as a complex is not really something difficult to make it. Probably depending on the situation will require you more extra knowledge in terms of uh, how to uh, design things for make it, let's say, testable in this kind of thing. But not, it's not, it's not something that, that uh, is not uh, impossible to do. And now the demo, I think is, I, I would like to basically end the demo here just to show you uh, that a particular workflow and a particular kata that I, it's, let's say something that I, design my, by myself is something that we, we can do and try to make it happen in, in our day-to-day -day basics. Probably is, I think more of the ideas are more or less clear and how to progress could be, you know, uh, different ways. But I, it was a kind of idea how to do this TDD thing in a unit test and also go to a more inter in, in integration test and then try to make both things working at the same time. So yes, uh, let's, I, I'm going to end my, my talk with a few recommendations and, and the final recap. So recommended content, I would say there are a lot of content uh, in internet nowadays, uh, but also I like books. So that's why I can recommend you to read some of those books. Uh, and yes, uh, the one that I probably recommend from, from the rest is the, the first one, Growing Object that uh, Object in the Software Guided by Test will give you probably a better idea of how to uh, TDD works, how to learn it, how to understand it, how to apply. The other one by Ken Beck is the, let's say the first one or the main, uh, everybody knows that, that that book, Test Driving Development by example. Probably it will give you a basic introduction, uh, uh, probably a, the idealized situation, but it's gonna help you also to understand how to do it. The, the art of unit testing the, uh, is, is based on C Sharp, but it, it is already uh, also a good book and it's really easy to, uh, to read, to understand. And there are a few things that probably you will notice that are interesting. The last one, the test driving development, a practical guy will give you also examples with a graphical user interface and, and, and yeah, real examples following that, that approach. Uh, yes, I would recommend you just also to review some of the main content around testing and design techniques and these kind of things. You will see that Martin Fallen has a lot of articles around it and there are a lot of places where you can see uh, JavaScript or Java practices. There are a lot of places I just share a few here with you. And yeah, the final recap. So I hope you have seen that TDD uh, is going to help you to 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 make your code, let's say, simpler, and I would say also even a modular and a better modular design because it's going to force you to describe contracts in a particular way, and it's going to help you to understand how somebody will consume your code which is, I think, a, a, a good thing. And yes, I know it's, it's, it's really difficult to adapt to the mechanism and sometimes you will struggle with it, but to maintain that practice is gonna be difficult, but I will 
they recommend you to try it again. Yes, try it because at the end, your surf, you, you're going to be more happy because your surf is going to be less difficult to maintain. And at the same time, you will see how beautiful it is to be able to replace things and at the same time do it in, in a more comfortable way. So yes, there are some tips. I hope those that I share with you make your life easier. And yes, I would try to recommend you to try to pair with your colleagues because it's going to help you. And I would say a lot. And the last one is, yes, probably you might notice that you need to practice and practice and practice and do it too many times because at the end you will internalize how to do it. And then it's going to take you, let's say, a, a bit of time for it. Yeah. And yo, yes, that's it. That's it from my part. So I hope you have joined. You you, you like that that, that uh, let's say that my talk, my my sharing session, my live coding. And yes, if you want, just write me an email or just tweet about it or ping me, send me a message. I will I will really happy to to try to answer any particular question around TDD or these kind of things. Yeah. Thank you very much for your very interesting talk. We still have uh, some questions here. Um, let's start with a question with the most votes. It's from Peter and he asked, when would you not recommend to use the practice of TDD? Where I don't recommend, oh, probably I will not start. I will not start trying to use TDD if there are people that the, all of them, they are starting by, you know, by the first time. So if the, if the people, that are trying to get used to TDD, they, they haven't tried before. If none of the team are, uh, they don't understand how to do it and they are trying to make it for the first time, uh, it's gonna be difficult for um, to, to be able to understand where the mistakes are gonna happening and how to solve it. So at this point, it's gonna be really difficult to, to have this balance of people that has more seniority than less seniority and understand that, for example, hey, you are mixing things when you're trying to solve that that issue, for example. So I will say that the best thing is probably starting with, with a, let's say with a better uh, practices, just for example, uh, using in a, in a, in your own day-to-day -day basics, for example, in personal projects or in particular katas or in scenarios or in, in, in community of practices. There are many companies that they have spaces where you can practice and try to uh, sit with somebody else who can explain you how to do that or you can explain how to do everything uh, anything else and that way you will not only be alone which is basically the, the most difficult thing to start something if nobody can explain you how to do it so probably sitting down with somebody else and just sharing your screen seeing how to do it and then you can go and step by step uh, understanding that you are mixing things or you are not mixing things and doing it correctly talking about the conventions of the unit test or the, the design you are doing. So in this way, doing it alone is going to be more difficult. So I would say that there are those things that are going to make you difficult to, to understand to how, to how to start with TDD is going to be more, more difficult. And also you have to struggling with many issues and you don't have time as uh, many people mentioned at the very beginning, it's going to be difficult to start with a test. So you will need more knowledge around uh, how to cover your goal by test, which makes you the things, the life easier, right? Because you need first to cover your actual code in production by test and then be able to change it. So mm -hmm. yeah, these are, I think I was thinking that there are the things that probably makes the things difficult to start with. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the same Peter has a second question with the second most votes. <laughs> Um, his hypothesis, uh, TDD is difficult because it includes practices like refactoring, good design, keyboard shortcuts, clean code, faking, mocking, emergent architecture, DDD, and much more. Where would you recommend to start learning? Wow. Uh, I think Peter has a lot of good, of quest good questions, but this one is, I think, better than the other one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, DDD, DDD involves basically a, a, a lot of uh, knowledge around how you will describe the scenarios where you later on you have to fulfill or describe how to solve it and the issue is that therefore TDD is not forcing you to a good design because basically you can do everything completely coupled and follow TDD so in, in, in that particular way I would say that following the good practices and doing 
pair programming or start working with somebody else that can give you a better understanding that those things should not be mixed, for example, or using a, a better uh, approach for mocking uh, components that you don't need. There are things that are going to help you to understand that where you're pairing somebody else will help you to understand that. How many books you have to read about uh, understanding a good design? I don't know. There are a lot of, of them about refactoring. There are not so many, but I have a lot of another talk probably another day. We can come, I can come back again and explain how to work with refactoring, how to do a few things around it about mocking, faking, etc. I will recommend the, the things about the articles where Martin Follick shared the, the basic concepts, how to explain and understand really well, let's say the pure concepts and about DDD, etc. There are uh, the books by, uh, we say, Bog Vernon uh, are really nice. I, I, th I would say that the Stillet one is much easier to read than the other ones. Uh, and yes, so uh, places to start learning, there are a lot of content around, but I will not say only one place. I would say that you have to try it with uh, the best way, in my opinion, is to work with somebody else that we, where you can join. And at the same time, try to practice, I don't know, in a particular, probably in training, where there are people that are specialized that they can do those those kind of things and can share with you how to apply those, those techniques. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, please, when you fill out the feedback, uh, feedback form, write in the comments if you are interested in having Nacho again with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will go. I will come back. No problem, Marcus. You know, I'm happy to come back again. You are welcome anytime. Yeah. And the next question is from Stephen. He's asking, how do you test internal logic methods private in case they are complicated? Or do you only test the interface public methods from the class? Okay, that's a typical thing that, that, that many people are asking about how to test uh, internal things. And the point is that we as a, the, as engineers should, uh, be, should, should verify the behavior, not the internal thing. What is happening internally in a particular class, probably we should not take this into account or should not be worried about. What we have to, let's say, uh, be scared is what, if there are side effects, we are calling a public method because they are the things that probably somebody will do in another way or in a probably in, in a, in imaginative way. And that's the point. That's the point that basically right now I will not recommend to, to test internal logic. So basically if, if for any reason you need to particularly verify that a particular state that is private can be somehow affected by any particular reason, then probably one of the things that I, I do is to use the same technique that is uh, provided by Michael Feathers that basically explain how to change production code without making change in the production code. It's basically more related to, in, in Java probably is more related with making a, a, a particular method or class, just make it more visible, not just make it public, but yes, somebody else, somebody is here. Yeah, hello, say hello. <laughs> so, so the point is that probably you might need to, uh, to as I mentioned, to make uh, some variables, just not make it private, but make, make it protected or make it just Package protected, package, package protected, and therefore you may probably have visibility from the test site. That's one of the other ways to make it. Just give me one second. Que vos cariño, que estica más, estica aquí. Sí. That is life. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Sí. Okay. <laughs> that was my thought. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Okay. So. Let's go to the next question. It's from uh, Jennifer and she's asking, how would you approach writing tests first when you don't know what data is available? I often have the problem writing tests first for third party extensions because I don't know where to get the data from when I start. Good question. Um, I have to say that I imagine in my case uh, that the, instead of uh, defining or using a repository, I could use a, an API to connect no, and retrieve that list of films. Uh, that, that could be no, another solution is imagine, I don't know, a particular external API that can give, give me back those results. So in this case, the implementation of the integration test could be probably different. Instead of connecting to a, to a Postgres database, I will connect to a real uh, API and then get back some, some results. So at the end, how you get back the, this data is not really affecting me, no, the, 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 the definition of the service at the, at the very beginning. So basically I, I, I put a picture of what I expect in the very beginning, just to rise everything from the service going deep into the solution. That's why going outside to the inside, 
it helps me to understand how we can approach this uh, this idea of designing one by one the, the steps and the, the elements that I need. That's why if I don't know exactly what I what I want to receive, just just define it. For example, the film was was defined by me, but just imagine that the well, it's, in fact, was not defined by me. And and the, and the example that the Kata was explaining, no, the film has to have these films, no, these fields. Sorry, the title, the year, the, those those things that that are the things that you probably may notice or may know when you are getting information or getting data from from some something else. So probably you might need okay, uh, I'm getting information from this external service. Probably I don't know how to do it, but probably I know that I I, I would like to retrieve something that is similar to this film or is something fairly similar, I don't know, an invoice or something that you might, might like. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Um, next question is from Walter. He's asking, why using embedded databases instead of defining mocks for each class requiring complex neighbors? Okay, in this case, I used this, uh, I was talking about embed databases as, a, as, a, as I use with Docker image. Uh, or, uh, well, I, I, I haven't, let's say, used an embedded database. I, I run a Docker image and I define in the Postgres image just to connect to a real database, right? And to be able to implement the solution, imagining that is the real production database in, in production, right? But basically uh, the idea of this test that is the integration test is to not mock anything. I want to verify at least one time that the connection to the database is making correctly, the selection and the union, the joining by the different tables is working fine and then get you on the results and see that the, the SQL is working fine. That's why I haven't used a uh, Docker image to make it because it's really you know cheap to do it instead of, you know, booting a real database to make the cluster working, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if the answer was really because the embedded database was a bit confused for me. Uh, Walter has a second question. Do you think that TDD will have influence to the microarchitecture class design? Uh, say classes are built differently when using TDD. Totally. In, in fact, when you are de de defining or describing classes with TDD, you are designing in testability in mind. So basically, you you will not be able to make a method private by default. You will you will start with a public method, and then you are going to define a contract where you know already or you want to do something and then expect a result. And you are designing this contract in that way. So therefore, the private methods are gonna arrive in later when you are refining or you are refactoring, this code is working, I have a, this suite of tests, and then before I can hide this particular behavior because it's internally in this class and nobody else will like or will, will need to do something else here. That's why, yes, it's gonna helping you to, to to build an ecosystem of classes that are destable by design. And it's, it's great because basically you will be able to replace, in this case, for example, a real database, a real connection to database, to a mocket one. And, it, and in fact, I started with a mocket one, but then I need I need to demonstrate that the solution is working with a particular database. And that that's the way, that one of the beautiful things about it, that is helping me you know, to, to describe components and at the same time put it, you know, base pieces that I can replace easily, which is also, Really, really fun, I think. Uh, thank you very much. So these were all questions and uh, a bunch of very interesting questions today. Yeah, I think so, yes. Uh, thank you very much, by the way. Really interesting question by, by all of you. So yeah, nice community, nice people. So I switch over to my slides here just for some information at the end to finish this up. So uh, at first, let me say we have some more events in our pipeline, uh, Kubernetes operators, for example, which are done by Jonathan. He's from Barcelona too. So uh, two talks from Spain. He's coming next week on Monday. And we have a, a JQ assistant. We have remote mob programming. So how to do it remotely is a very great uh, challenge these days. And we have a German talk Drei Patterns für skalierbare Microservices. So in English, it's uh, three patterns for scalable microservices, but this talk is in German, of course. So, and uh, we want you, all of you. So if you have interesting topics, uh, please tell us about, so that we can organize a talk about this topic, or if you can recommend a speaker, or maybe you have, uh, you're a speaker yourself, or you want to learn how to be a speaker, 
please uh, connect to us. And uh, if you speak as a Java user group, like Nacho today, you will get a very nice present, a real Swiss knife, very huge with a <laughs> Java user group branding here. And uh, this is our speaker present to Nacho. Oh, thank you very much. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And to all the other speakers. <laughs> Uh, we have a Slack workspace. Uh, some of you have already joined us there, so you are invited to join us in our Slack workspa workspace and uh, to get in contact with us. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we have a feedback form, I told you before. Please give us feedback. Please use the comment fields to uh, give us information about new topics. Uh, for example, Nacho with his uh, refactoring talk and uh, other ones. And after you have sent the um, feedback form, you can optionally, if you want, leave your email address, which is not connected to the feedback. And to all people who have filled out the feedback form and left their email address, we will raffle an IntelliJ license for one year. Thank you very much. And please be patient. It needs a few seconds, and then you will be automatically redirected to the feedback form. Thank you, Nacho, for being here. Thank you all the attendees for the very interesting questions. Stay happy and hopefully see you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.